Welcome back to Crux Stationalis, the Roman Station Church Network. Today we head to the Roman Station Church for the Saturday in the fourth week of Lent, San Nicola in Carcere. Let's explore the Roman Station Church as we continue the Lenten Roman Pilgrim itinerary. And then we will discover how Santa Claus ended up in jail. San Nicola in Carcere is a titular church in Rome near the Forum Borarium in the Rione Sant'Angelo. In English, it is called St. Nicholas in Prison. The first church on the site was probably built in the 6th century, and a 10th century inscription may be seen on a fluted column next to the entrance. But we find record of the first definite dedication on a plaque on the church dating to the year 1128. It was constructed in and from the ruins of the Forum Holitorium and its Roman temples, along with a jail, which a tradition supported by Pliny's History of Rome states was sited in the temple's ruins, hence the name St. Nicholas in Prison or San Nicola in Carcere. Spolia from all these ancient remains is still apparent in the church's construction most particularly in the three columns from the Temple of Juno Sospita, which are incorporated into both the 10th century and the 1599 north facades of the church. The columns of the Temple of Janus, dedicated by Gaius Dulius after his naval victory at the Battle of Milae in the year 260 BC, can still be seen as being incorporated into the wall of the church. The dedication to St. Nicholas was made by the Greek population in the area. In the 11th century, it was known as the Church of Petrus Leonis, referring to the converted Jewish family, the Pier Leoni, who rebuilt the nearby theater of Marcellus as a fortress. One of the members of their family, Pietro Pier Leone, was an important cardinal in the 1120s, and he was elected Pope Anacletus II, though he was later branded as a schismatic anti-pope. The church was rebuilt in 1599 with a new facade by Giacomo della Porta. The medieval campanile or bell tower, which originally had been a fortified tower adapted to a bell tower, was not altered. Let's head inside. Let's hear the account of the legend of St. Nicholas being thrown into jail. In the year 325, Emperor Constantine convened the Council of Nicaea, the first ecumenical council. More than 300 bishops came from all over the Christian world to debate the nature of the Holy Trinity. It was one of the early church's most intense theological questions, rightfully so, as it is the foundation of our faith. Arius, from Egypt, was teaching that Jesus the Son was not equal to God the Father. He said he was greater than a man, but less than a God. He forcibly argued his position at length, and the bishops listened respectfully at the Council of Nicaea. As Arius vigorously continued, Nicholas became more and more agitated. Finally, he could no longer bear being attacked what he believed was essential to our faith. The outraged Nicholas got up, crossed the room and punched Arius in the face. The bishops were shocked. It was unbelievable that another bishop would lose control and be so hot-headed in such a solemn assembly. They brought Nicholas to Constantine. Constantine said, even though it was illegal for anyone to strike another in his presence, in this case, the bishops themselves must determine the punishment. The bishop stripped Nicholas of his bishop's garments, chained him, and threw him into jail. That would keep Nicholas away from the council. When the council ended, a final decision would be made about his future. Nicholas was ashamed and prayed for forgiveness, though he did not waver in his belief. During the night, Jesus and Mary, his mother, appeared, asking, Why are you in jail? St. Nicholas replied, Because of my love for you. Jesus then gave the book of the Gospels to Nicholas, and Mary gave him an omophorium, the Eastern Bishop's pallium. So Nicholas would again be dressed as a bishop. Now at peace, Nicholas studied the scriptures for the rest of the night. When the jailer came in the morning, he found the chains loose on the floor and Nicholas dressed in bishop's robes, 
quietly reading the scriptures. When Constantine was told of this, the emperor asked that Nicholas be freed. Nicholas was then fully reinstated as the Bishop of Myra. The Council of Nicaea agreed with Nicholas's views, deciding the question against Arius. The work of the Council produced the Nicene Creed, which to this day we pray on the feasts of our Lord, Our Lady, and the Apostles. And so entered the central term of the Nicene Creed, used to describe the relationship between the Father and the Son, homoousios, or consubstantiality, meaning of the same substance. The question is, why is this important? Saint Athanasius assists us in understanding. Arius's teaching reduced the Son of God to a demigod, reintroducing polytheism, since worship of the Son was not abandoned, and it undermined the Christian concept of redemption, since only he who was truly God could be deemed to have reconciled humanity to the Godhead.